Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today uh, we're doing a quick video on a car that I've had in stock for a little while. People have asked me to do videos on it um, and this is that video. We are in the very nice looking 2017 Maserati Ghibli that I bought a little while ago, which as you've probably seen in other videos, looks absolutely gorgeous on the outside. There is no doubting that this is a very pretty car from the outside but today's video is going to be getting into is that where you know the quality of this car ends is that its unique selling point and that's all it's got I bought this car on a bit of a whim. That is the beauty of being a car dealer, if you're a guy who likes cars. But if you see something and you think, I'd like to try one of those, I've never experienced it, I'd like to know what it's like, you can buy one, sell it, and try and make some money along the way, if you're lucky, it sometimes happens. But you get to try out all these different cars. And this is one that, unfortunately, has disappointed me a little bit. Maybe it's one of those don't meet your hero type things. It is the first Maserati I've owned, and I know that quality, being Italian, is you know not necessarily their strong point. But I did think that these Ghiblis, they look such incredible value these days. I mean, it was the cheapest sort of production car they ever made. And it was the first diesel car they ever made as well, incidentally. It would just be, you know, a real great entry level into having a Maserati, having that sort of three-pronged trident on your headrest. It does give you a lot of flash for not a lot of cash, to be honest. These can be had at auction for about 12 or 13,000 pounds. I think it's probably around about what we paid for this. We've got it up for about 15 and a half at the moment. So if we sell it for that, there is a reasonable margin in it. And we have had quite a bit of interest. A lot of people think it's worth a lot more than it is. You know, it's one of those cars that really does look great value. You can really look like you're doing very well with this car for not a lot of money. Now, it is a car that I think is going to suit a lot of people. They're going to love the kind of flamboyance, especially when we get into putting this in sport mode. It makes a lot of interesting noises. It looks right. It's going to tick a lot of boxes. But if you're someone who's used to premium cars and you're expecting the same from this, I think you're going to be a little bit let down, to be honest. When I got in here, it felt really familiar. And it turns out that these are based on the Chrysler 300C, largely, uh, which in turn is based on an old E-Class Mercedes, um, the sort of Mercedes that ran up until 2003. I can't remember what that is, W211 or something. Um, so it's all quite old technology, really. We got this three litre V6 diesel engine, which compared to modern V6 diesels is a bit agricultural. If we pull away now, it's not the most wonderful sounding of engines. bit better when you get your foot down a little bit but at lower revs it does sound a bit agriculture it sounds a bit more like you're driving a Land Rover to be honest which I know it's a very similar type of engine but you know it'd be nice to have it a bit smoother in something sporty looking like this now if you don't like that sound then you can hit the sports button and you'll be greeted by a very different tone altogether so let's try that now. Let's put sport mode on, it'll be instant. All of a sudden we get a V8 burble from the exhaust. I'll put in a clip now of that kind of just sat still and the difference. I gotta be honest, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'll tell you why. When I first heard it, I thought that's piped into the cabin because what's weird about it is this is a V6 diesel engine, but what I'm hearing is a V8 burble. It's kind of like blub, 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 blub. What you'd expect from a V8, which a V8 is what you'd probably expect to hear from a Maserati. You know, they're famous for their, uh, what is it, 4.2s and 4.7 V8s that they put in the Quattroporte and they put in the Gran Turismo. But in this, it just isn't quite right, at least not for me. Maybe it's because I've got a bit of car knowledge and I know that it's a diesel V6. I know what that engine sounds like without that sport mode on, so that when you do put it on, it's just a bit of a jockster experience. It shouldn't be making lumpy V8 noises. It should be a smooth V6. 
So to me, it sounded like it was being piped into the cabin. But if you go outside, you can hear it. It's definitely coming from the exhaust and it's pretty loud. And everyone who hears it thinks, God, that sounds great. And in fact, it sounds a lot better from the outside than it does from the inside. Or at least, yeah, when you can't take into account that V6 diesel noise, it sounds pretty damn good. And it turns out what it's actually got, which was my next guess, was that it must have some kind of, I thought maybe it was a valve, but I did think it's got to be some kind of speaker system. What it turns out, I'll see if I can find a clip somewhere, is that this does have like a marine speaker, like a waterproof speaker in the exhaust system. It's like welded in into a dome, into like a pressure cooker, and it just plays noises through it. I know that because it seems like they break fairly often and people need to repair them and you can swap them out for a, a Sony instead of a Panasonic or something tragic like that. I understand why they've done it, but it's at the lower speeds again. We're going through a car park now. Let's get, get the windows cracked and you can hear it. Let's, in fact, let's put it into park. It sounds pretty good, but I just, it's so fake. I hate it. It doesn't tie up. Again, I wish they'd put like a throatier kind of raspy V8 soundtrack into the mp3 player that is playing through the exhaust that would make much more sense or they'd given it a v8 turbo diesel engine but that kind of clattery it just doesn't marry up and i suppose i'm being a bit of a snob but i just do not like it at all. So we're going to turn that off. Back to being what isn't a particularly attractive sounding engine, but at least it's authentic. When it comes to quality in here, I'd say it's far more, I wouldn't even say it's Mondeo quality, to be honest, uh, but it's nearer that than it is, you know, Mercedes E-Class or Audi or anything. It's cheap, nasty plastics. We have got a soft plastic kind of thing on the door to give it a fake leather effect, but everything else is pretty cheap and nasty. In fact, our bits of internal sort of black piano, plasticky gloss bits here have just cracked, probably because it's got so brittle. The seats themselves are comfortable, but the steering wheel just, oh, yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it feels cheap. Feels more like it would come out of a Vauxhall than out of a Maserati. The switches, again, they look very sort of GM. And I know they've probably come out of, you know, Chrysler or something, which I guess is GM, is it? Like, I don't know. I'm not an expert on these things. But, yeah, it just, they're not premium feeling at all. And the more you kind of look around, the more you just feel a bit disappointed with what you've got, really, for your Maserati badge. The infotainment system is a really nice big screen, and it kind of makes the cabin feel more modern but it is an Android unit and it tells you that and you have to hit agree every time you get in the car just for it to operate. Um, and I don't like it. Another thing I really dislike is that you've got controls here for your heating and all that sort of stuff. I'll give it its credit. It does have manual switches here for heat and fan blowers and everything. As cheap and nasty and plasticky as they are, they are there. But there are a button here next to your Maserati badge in the middle of your infotainment system says controls and it's got a picture of heated seats, uh, but it doesn't have heated seats. And I get this might not have been specced with them, but don't show me the button or don't show me a symbol on a screen that should be really simple to code out and have a different thing there if this doesn't have heated seats. I'm going to be going through all these displays. I can turn the screen off via that button, but why would the screen controls be under a picture of heated seats? Um, and it's pretty much like that, to be honest, like all Android things. It's a bit of a nuisance to use. Um, if we try and go for the radio now, I don't even know how you turn the volume up other than I figured out on the back of the steering wheels, there are buttons to go up and down, but I can't actually find there's anywhere else that anyone else could control the volume with, which just seems ridiculous. It's all down to the driver and they have to do it on the back of the steering wheel. Um, I could be com being completely idiotic here. It's, it's been known to happen, but where? 
is the volume button. You know, volume is one of those things you want, a nice big analog button. If you, someone's trying to talk to you or give you instructions driving or something, just turn it down. You don't want to have to go to the back of the steering wheel and do it that way. Where's the, um, maybe there's a mute button or something, but what can I say? Once, once you decide you don't like it, you decide you don't like it, I suppose. Right, just to break up me moaning about things that I don't understand and don't like, thought we could take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Carwow Dealer Auctions, because I do like them and they're very easy to understand. So if you're a car dealer, you've got at least five cars, you've got a physical location, you can sign up for car dealer auctions. They're completely free. They run daily. There's absolutely tons of stock available and it means that there's a bit like the Maserati. There's loads of things in your area that probably fits the stock profile that you want and perhaps something, it might be something a bit interesting as well. I just like window shopping as well, to be honest, to see what's coming up in the area. Um, I like to come in here every day, actually, and do just a bit of window shopping, see what's in my area, even if it's further afield. And if you've got something specific you want to look for, it's really handy for that as well. So I like scrolling through. There's a, what did I see earlier? Oh, there's a nice Audi RS4, which is the sort of thing I'm trying not to buy these days. It's very tempting to get suckered in and buy it. That's a very cool car. But since we're on the Maserati topic, I did do a little search earlier, and there are two Maseratis for sale on here, including a Ghibli. It's a 15 play on 85,000 miles, and it's just £9,000, the guide price. Cat Clean's 9400 uh, There's only 2 hours 44 left on this uh, auction as well, but we've, we've heard enough about Ghiblis. Let's talk about this Maserati Grand Cabrio V8. That is beautiful. Look at that. Now that is a proper Mazza. Look at the interior as well on those seats. Anyway, I could get carried away here looking at cars and things, but as I say, if you're a dealer, make sure you get signed up. It's free to do. There's a link in the description. Uh, the fees are really cheap as well in comparison to going to uh, auctions. And you get to check the car over before you buy it. Even if you're having it delivered, you get to check the car over before you hand over your money. So it's something you really need in your toolkit when it comes to buying stock, which as a car dealer, if you are, you'll know is probably one of the hardest parts of this job. Check the link, get on board, don't miss out. Our sat-nav is quite crisp looking. It's got one of those annoying things where it's pointing the arrow in the opposite direction of me. I guess that's because it always points north or something. Maybe you can change that in the settings, but um, while it looks crisp, there is no kind of real satellite imagery going on. It's just a yellow line in the middle of grey. It's not showing us anything to do with the topography around here to give us any reference points. So pretty basic in that regard as well. It's got a button here which is ICE, which I assumed meant in-car entertainment. Uh, it could have meant internal combustion engine as well, I suppose. But if you press that, it comes up on your center LED display here. Uh, that is increased comfort and efficiency mode. So that's like eco mode, basically, but they've called it ICE. You've got traction control here. You've got mode, so you can put it into manual mode, uh, but you don't have any flappy paddles. All you can do is move your gear shifter backwards and forwards. Uh, so yeah, that's just M for manual, actually. It's not modes. Not the smoothest of rides. Would you expect it to be in a Maserati? I don't know, really, but uh, considering this is like meant to be a competitor to the 5 Series, which is quite a comfortable, sometimes sporty, depending on the variant you've got, but, you know, executive saloon... Mm, I don't know. It just... It's just not up to the mark. It's not a competitor. It's just... It's not as well built. I don't know if you'd be picking up on the microphone that it's bits of things just rattling around in here. Um, yeah. I know I'm coming across as really negative and I don't want to be. I'd love to tell you that this is the greatest thing that I've ever bought for 13 grand, but it's just really disappointing. It looks great. It's one of those things that looks great and if that's all that matters to you, then great. But I wouldn't really call this a premium vehicle. And maybe... It's naive of me to think that it was going to be. I'm sure a lot of you would tell me that, you know, Maserati don't have a great track record for that, maybe. But, yeah, I was disappointed. I'll say it. Even my Ghibli badge in the middle was such cheap, nasty plastic chrome. It's just very disappointing. I think this engine's about 275 brake horsepower. Um, I 
I don't know if the speaker gives you any more. I don't know if you actually get any kind of sportiness by pressing the sport button other than having the speakers activate. But we'll try taking off here in sport mode, see. Oh, oh, there it goes. All right, well, once you're up and going, that is actually pretty quick, and that is what you'd expect from a turbocharged V6 diesel. Yeah, it sounds better with the speaker thing going when it's more at full chat like that than it does at idle. Can't really get away from the fact there's a bit of a clattery diesel. That noise, I'm sure you can hear that. Let's try manual mode. See if it's any more satisfying to drive. I give it its credit that it is push away to go down. Well, I've got to say, it's quite a snappy response when you're in manual mode. Credit where credit's due. Um, and yes, it is push away to go down and pull towards you. Like what I would consider what it should be, like a sequential gearbox, as if you were in a rally car. BMW have got this right. I don't think Audi have and many others haven't. Others you push to go up. And maybe it's just a bit geeky of me, but you know, having grown up watching Rally and their sequential gearboxes, I want it to be pulled towards me to go up and push to go down. But that's just being fussy, really. So I have to say, I am impressed with the gearbox. That changed a lot quicker than I expected it to. It feels really responsive, considering this is based largely on Mercedes engine, gearbox, etc. Uh, they're not notoriously that snappy, certainly not the older stuff, so that has surprised me, to be honest. I also don't like that if you try and, it should ideally be that you push it all the way forward to go into reverse, but it's not, it's parked, so if you come to a stop like I did then, and you kind of want to just go right straight into it, that's neutral, that's reverse now, but when we're in drive and then you go, right, that's park, it's just irritating. Oh, I've gone to neutral now. One forward, reverse. We finally got reverse. Just irritating. I know I'm being fussy. I know I'm coming across as very negative about this car, but yeah, I think that's just my disappointment coming through. I thought this was gonna be, oh, and you can't just pull it to go into neutral. You re, you've got to engage the thing on the back. And I know a lot of people tell me, oh, that's what a lot of cars like. Yeah, a lot of them are, but you don't have to do that in a BMW, for example. You wouldn't have to do that if this was a Mercedes and it had a column shifter, you would just sling it back into reverse. It would be much easier. And I'm sure a lot of this stuff is Maserati Ghibli quirks and you would get used to them and you would love them. I'm sure obviously plenty of people do love these cars. Uh, and I think, I still think it's really, really pretty. And I think if you go into buying this car with having seen this video, and all the knowledge, not expecting it to be a very premium car, then you'll be happy. And if you're someone who doesn't mind having a pair of speakers in your exhaust playing an MP3 track to make it sound a bit cooler, then great. But for me, I'm just a bit, just a bit stuck up my own ass, to be honest. I want it to be proper or I want it to just be not at all. Don't do it if you're going to fake it. But well, that's just my 2p on it. Anyway, there you are. Sorry, it's a bit of a moan, a bit of a slagging this car off. But you lot asked for it, and I'm going to give you my honest opinions. Um, it wouldn't be in my interests to slag this off, really, because I've still got it up for sale, and I want someone to buy it. But I know someone will buy it, and someone will love it. This is just my opinion on it, and just letting you know some of the things about it that bug me, really. Um, so say if you happen to buy one, just to find out the same stuff that I've already found out. If you did enjoy it, find it useful, please make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're looking to sell your car, especially if it's something interesting like this, I probably don't want another one of these, but maybe if it's really cheap, I don't mind. Uh, then visit my website, carsboughtformore.com. If you want any of my merchandise or you want to see which of the private number plates we've got for sale at the moment, then head to my website, shiftingmetal.co.uk. Other than that, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.